Summary of the Blue Hotel by Stephen Crane A train goes through Fort Romper, Nebraska, a small town on the edge of the wild American West. From the train window, you can see the Blue Palace Hotel, which stands out against the dull green and brown scenery. The hotel owner, Pat Scully, stands out in the cold to try to get a few unclaimed guests to spend the night at his place. After short greetings, the cowboy, the Swede, and the Easterner follow Scully back to the hotel. Inside the hotel, Scully tells his son Johnny to bring the guests' bags upstairs. Johnny is playing cards with the old farmer. During dinner, the guys make small talk, and each seems to be getting a feel for the other. The Swede is quiet and unsure, while the cowboy and the Easterner seem friendly, if a little wary. At dinner, the Swede says something that seems like a joke about how dangerous it is to travel in the West. The others don't know how to take it. After dinner, Scully says that it's going to snow. Johnny, whose temper scared away the old farmer, asks the cowboy, the Swede, and the Easterner to play cards with him. Even though the Swede isn't sure, they agree. The men are playing a very heated game when the Swede comes in and says that someone has been killed in the hotel's front room. Johnny gets angry right away, and the Swede tells the other guys that he thinks Johnny will die that night in the hotel. The other men think the Swede is crazy, and the fight doesn't stop until Scully comes in and wants to know what's going on. The Swede feels too much and gets scared, so he insists on going. He goes upstairs to get ready to leave. Upstairs, Scully meets the Swede. The Swede is suspicious of Scully right away. Scully tries to talk to him about his other kids by showing him pictures in the spare room. After they both have a drink, the Swede thinks that Scully is trying to kill him. At the same time, the cowboy, Johnny, and the Easterner are talking about the Swede's personality downstairs. The cowboy says that he thinks the Swede is actually Dutch because of his accent, while the Easterner says that the Swede's strange behavior is caused by simple fear. The person from the East thinks that the Swede thinks he is in terrible danger because he read cheap books about the West. The Swede decides to stay in the hotel, after all. Scully and the Swede go back downstairs. When the Swede leaves the room, Scully tells the men that the Swede is acting weird, but that he thinks the Swede is okay now. The men keep playing cards, and the game gets even more heated. The Swede charges Johnny of cheating out of the blue in the middle of the game. Johnny finally snaps at the Swede, and a fight breaks out over the card table. As the fight gets worse, the guys end up fighting more violently outside in the snowstorm. Johnny and the Swede fight, and the Easterner watches, scared and doubtful, while Scully and the cowboy encourage Johnny. The Swede wins the fight and walks out of the hotel with his bag in an arrogant, haughty way. At the same time, a group of women, including the hotel staff and proprietress, rush to help Johnny. Johnny's mother says that Scully should be ashamed that he let his son get hurt so badly. The other guests, Scully and Johnny, are glad that the Swede has left. As the Swede walks through town towards the bar, he can see the train off in the distance. Inside, he gets a drink from the barman and yells at the other people in the saloon, including the famous gambler, to pay attention to him. When the men refuse to drink with the Swede, they fight. During the fight, the gambler pulls out a knife and stabs the Swede, who dies on the floor of the bar. Later on, when the Swede's murder trial is over, the Easterner and the cowboy meet up. The Easterner says that the gambler got a light term for the murder, and the cowboy says that the Swede's aggressive behavior caused him to die young. The Easterner doesn't agree and tells the cowboy that Johnny did cheat at cards, but he didn't say anything at the time because he was afraid. The Easterner then says that all the men, not just the gambler who stuck the Swede with a knife, are to blame for the Swede's death. About the author In 1871, Stephen Crane was born to Methodist parents in Newark, New Jersey. He was their ninth child. He started writing when he was four years old, and by the time he was 16, he had written several articles. Even though Crane was a good writer, he didn't want to go to college. After a short time at Syracuse University, where he spent more time in his fraternity than in the classroom, he dropped out to become a journalist. 
Crane's first book was Maggie, A Girl of the Streets, which came out in 1893. In 1895, Crane's novel The Red Badge of Courage became famous all over the country, even though Crane had never been to battle. Critics liked how real it was, even though Crane had never been in a fight. After The Red Badge of Courage came out, Crane went to Cuba to work as a war reporter. On the way to the island, his boat sank, and he was left to float in a raft for more than 24 hours. This event gave him the idea for his most famous story, The Open Boat. After the accident, Crane and his partner, Cora Taylor, went back to their jobs as war reporters. During this time, he and Taylor met famous writers like H.G. Wells and Joseph Conrad, who became their friends. Even though Crane knew a lot of famous people, he had health problems and money problems for most of his adult life. He was only 28 years old when he died of TB in a German hospital in 1900. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.